this is my workshop. It's where I do my dirty work, as it were, fenders, door stops, whisks, anything that makes a lot of mess. And then we have the rope store bill, and we went to to the shed man and said, we want you to build a museum for us, and this is what we want, and that's what we want. So we designed that building specifically as a museum. Let's go and have a look. The reason that we, we set it up was that over the years we've done a lot of research work to do with sailors rope work and uh, you'd go somewhere like Mystic Seaport and there'll be a huge room full of scrimshaw and the same guys who work with rope, all the rope work that they made was in drawers behind. Nobody seemed to celebrate the work that the sailors did with cordage. Um, <laughs> and then the same at, Ch at Greenwich, you know, basically you'd think that, that ships went to sea without any rigging or anything like that and the skill barely existed. Boat builders get a bit of respect but not a great deal in most maritime museums and, but the riggers and the, and the sailors, uh, the work that they did, no. Scant regard for the skills. Exactly. So um, we decided that we would put our money where our mouth was and we opened in 96 as the Museum of Knox and Sailors Rope Work because we wanted to stand proud and this is what we want people to do. This is what, uh, to, to uh, treat this matter seriously. So, in a couple of days time, I'm going to the UK Maritime Heritage Forum in Glasgow. I'm going as the keeper curator of the National of the Museum of Knox and Sailors Rope Work and, yeah. and speak up for this whole sector. Yes. And so this is a mix of tools and then of the products that were made. Exactly, exactly. Um, and the tools are very interesting to me because they can be researched and people have never really researched them in the past. Um, but um, there are sort of three or four main areas within the collection that are worth looking at. This is sailors rope work made by sailors who are you know, they've learnt from one another. They haven't looked up in the Ashley Book of Knots and gone and bought the best quality material. Some of it is higher quality than others, but it's it's there. It it's been learnt, sort of passed down through the generations. One might say the majority of the rope. So can we look at a few things? There's some some uh, sailors sea chest beckets. Yes. They look pretty old. Well, and this is the difficulty. You can't really date them, although. I've got, got one here, if you like to just look down here, this Beckett down oh, here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So and that's this a is typical the, sailor's What's interesting is that he's still got the shirt or whatever that would have been put round it to bring it ashore, and the chest dates from something like the 1850s, and we date that by the hinges and the construction. 1860s, so 1860s, yeah. And the rope work but, also? Well, would be contemporary to that time, yes. It, why did they cover the rope with, well, with what you call a shirt? Well, I think that was to bring it ashore so you didn't muck it up. Okay, you protect it. Because, because you're so proud of what you've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's another one. Can you explain quickly a couple of these, um, the, the, the knots that we use? So well, what's at well the that end? would be, that's a four strand, it's a man rope knot, four, uh, four strands, that's all a wall knot with a crown knot on top and then doubled and if you go right in tight the ca the rope strands have been covered with canvas yes. or shirt or something well, like yes. that so it's smooth so you can't see the strand of the rope uh, quite clever yeah, stuff yeah and then what's the what's well, the actual it, handle made of is that a type well, of it? yes it's some kind of cross pointing of some sort or another um, almost like a Turk's head type of thing there'd be ring bolt hitching here they vary. How, how long would it take a sailor oh, to make his own hours, uh, handles? Hours, I mean, yeah. if you want me to make a pair, something like five or six hundred pounds, you know, so, and, and I'm not charging my full hourly rate as I should be, kind yeah. of thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, the, these, 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 so these it's, a re it's a reflection on the time they have. Really, and it's a, a reflection, of too, of their skill. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's almost their certificate of competence. This is a very special piece. They're all ox <laughs> because they're from a whaler. A oh. pulling whaler, an American whale ship's whaler, whale and boats for, for for chasing the whale. And did they did they want that to be quiet? That's right. Yes, they muffled the oars in that manner. And those are incredibly rare. And they came to me through a good contact 
somewhere in Europe. They've been repaired and damaged and repaired, and I think that they came um, it, from the 1920s when there was a film made in New Bedford. I right. think that uh, uh, after that, the, the whale boats were then distributed around Europe to various museums. I've got a little bit of contemporary rope work, a, a selection from around the world, pieces in many ways to exemplify particular techniques by uh, contemporary makers. What are these... Um it looks like a wine goblet. Well, they right? are. They're, they're, they're chalices made by a guy called Paolo from, from Portugal. Really splendid work. It's the sailmaker's tools that particularly interest me because of their, um, the ability to be able to trace the makers of the tools themselves. And let's face it, you know, craftsmen can't work without tools. And so we should, in the same way that we should celebrate the the makers of, of the rope work, we should also celebrate the people that made the tools. And what are these? Can we just the, have a quick... The, um, the, these are look at a serving these. mallets and serving boards. And boards, yes. For, for worming, parceling, and then serving. We have a piece of rope. So, we have worming, parceling, which would normally be tarred, and then we have the serving. And that, you can see how, how hard that's put on really very, very tightly with the serving mallet. All this would be heavily tarred, and whether it would be um, synth so natural fibre or whether it would be wire rope, it would protect it. This is my smallest serving mallet. It's for real. It would be used for putting on a whipping, a tight whipping, on the ends of a strand of wire rope prior to you splicing it. Yeah. Custom made for the maker, for the user. Yeah. That's probably the world's smallest serving maker. <laughs> but it does the job properly. We talked about serving. This reel would run on the rope itself and would have all the yarn on it so that you didn't have to pass the, the board of yarn. The, the rope went through here. I don't know that this one will fit. Oh, you've got a large one? I've got a large one. And this one's got the yarn on it. When you're serving, all your marlin is on here, and it just goes round and round as you're serving. So you can do that as a as a solo. You don't that's have right. to have, have a, a second person in the have team. Have a second person. It's one solution. So I'm lucky now. I've got three of these, and so we have the. I mean, I suppose this is nearer the scale. Whoops. Are they made of a particular wood? Does no, do you know? No, 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 I don't think so. I mean, this one. So it comes apart. So that actually is about the right perfect size for that rope. And then with your serving mallet, you wouldn't need anybody to yeah, yeah. be working. It's a man and boy job. And the, the, the Museum of Knots and Sailors Rope Work sort of logo is based on, yeah. on the man yeah. and, and the boy. Yeah. And I think that's really exemplifies and he's uh, passing the marlin around. That's as, right, the boy's the, passing the marlin. The but while says. he's doing it, he's learning, he's understanding, he's talking, he's being he, he, he's having the skill and the knowledge and the feel because these things are a matter of a feel as well as actually just um, you know, learning. You've got to have it in your hands. You've got to feel how tight is tight and how not too tight. Oh, the mine's gone and broke now or the spunion's broke because it was too tight. Yeah. We've written quite extensively about these. Senate mats made... And the wonder about these, unlike most rope work that we've got in this collection, we know almost all of the names of the people that made the items because those that have survived have survived in the family because they are significant to the family. So in this instance, Grandfather Chivers made that. He made it in 1922. The family came to me to restore it. And I said, you shouldn't be using this. You shouldn't be walking on this. It's a museum piece. Well, they, were, they had two, and they generously gave one to, to the museum. So we know it was made in 1922, and here we are, what, near enough 100 years later. What's it made of? That's probably made out of the yarn from an old manila rope. These are, these are mainly for domestic use back home, made, bought home, given to the family, and then would be in the family, in the family home, as a reminder of son or father, you know, in his absence, but he's still there. And the other thing that's made 
to be used, worn out and thrown away, are rope fenders. Ah. So we have here a range of rope fenders. These, we rarely know who made them because they really have been, you know, just abandoned somewhere along the line. Um, this one here, it's a, a bow pudding from a RNLI uh, vessel. I believe it to be the last one made at their workshops in Poole, and that would have been in the skip if it hadn't been for me to say, what are you going to do with the old one? Because I was making them a new one. Oh, it's going to go in the skiff. I said, no, it isn't. It's going to be sent up to Ipswich, and I won't charge you for sending you the new one. What are they filled with, these um Well, these <laughs> that would be filled with old rope, built up layers of rope. This one here, made by Mr Bastian in South End, um, that um, is filled with cork chippings. The coloured one here comes from Portugal. It's a bow fender, but they, in Portugal, they paint all their rigging. Uh, rather than using tar, they paint it and they paint it with these wonderful colours. Having run this micro-museum for more than 20 years, Des is now making an online catalogue of all the pieces for transfer to Chatham's historic dockyard. The plan is to store uh, the items, and you'd need an appointment to see them, which is how Des runs it here, but it would be good if some space could be assigned to showing some of this unique handiwork, which is such a testament to the skills of ordinary sailors uh, from the days of sail. It's very difficult to get across the amount of work and the whole heritage and, and skill base from which it has sort of um, flourished and grown. And, um, and so, I mean, I'm not like a proper museum with great big explanatory panels, but the stories I can tell about these things and the stories that are still to be told that I haven't found out yeah, yet. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I'm very pleased that the, the collection will have a long-term future at the Chatham Historic Dockyard. <laughs> <laughs>